Hi everybody, this is Joe Flick with the State Library and I'm here with Amy, Angie and Jamie from the Museum of the Rockies. I'm going to turn everything over to them so they can tell you what they have planned for their summer reading program trunk set they're going to make available to our libraries in Montana this summer. So take it away. Great. Well, thank you all so much for joining us today. My name is Angie Weikert. I'm the Director of Operations, Education, and Public Programs here at MOR in Bozeman. And I've got Jamie Ox with me, who's a, a new member of our team in charge of all of our outreach programs. Um, so we're excited to have Jamie with us. Um, I see a lot of familiar names. So I think some of you have done this program before. Is anybody new to our summer reading program? If you are, just give me a little shout out in the chat box there. Um, this program, what we're going to do today um, is uh, go, go through a little bit about MOR, so you know uh, why we're um, putting on this program. Um, you are probably aware of this year's fantastic summer reading program theme, which uh, we couldn't be more thrilled about here, and we'll tell you why in just a minute. Uh, we'll show you where to find our resources online um, and uh, some of our extra sheets that go with it. Um, Jamie will run through the program as it currently stands. So what we do typically is have this webinar in, um, in the winter, get your feedback, uh, tweak the lesson a little bit uh, before we send out the final curriculum. So this will be um, a part of our, our testing to see what you all think of, of what we want to provide for you. And then we'll give you the link on where to reserve a kit. Uh, so fantastic. We've got quite a few new people. So welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm, I'm so thrilled you're part of this program. Um, Museum of the Rockies uh, is part of Montana State University, but we're also a 501c3 nonprofit institution, so we wear two hats. We are a Smithsonian affiliate and are one of um, only a few hundred uh, museums that are accredited by the American Alliance of Museums, it's now called. Um, we are the biggest museum in the state, and we just had a record-breaking year last year. Um, we just hit 196,000 visitors over the course of 2017 which uh, blows away our previous records of 182 to 184,000 visitors. Um, so we are quite excited to be able to serve uh, more people um, here in Montana. One of our biggest um, areas that we focus on here with the education department is reaching Montana school children. So being part of Montana State University and the land grant institution, one of our roles within, um, the, within the university and the state is to help get resources out to all the people of Montana. So this is where you all fit in. Um, uh, I'm sure uh, many of you, and it looks like from this list, uh, live far enough away from us here in Bozeman that it's not realistic to come down and see all of the exhibits that we have or be able to participate in our programming here. So what we do is we send out kits or trunks to schools and um, organizations around um, the state of Montana um, and uh, that's what we're providing for you all today. So by you all joining in on our summer reading program, it helps us get more resources from MOR and Montana State University out to the people of Montana and all of our communities. So uh, typically our outreach materials are in the areas that we're best known for. Obviously paleontology with our world-class dinosaur exhibits, Astronomy with um, our public planetarium, um, our Yellowstone, uh, we've got a kid's room that's Yellowstone themed, so we have resources on uh, the, the natural sciences of Yellowstone. And then um, helping provide support for the Indian Education for All initiative for the uh, Office of Public Instruction. Those are our standard resources that we provide year round. And uh, it's based on those permanent exhibits that you see listed there. Um, but the exciting part of this year is that our summer changing exhibit ties right in to the summer reading theme, um, which uh, our summer exhibit is on guitars, and I'll share a little bit more about that in a minute. Um, the way that this kit program works, uh, we started this in 2013. The theme that year was dig into reading, and we got oh several phone calls, I would say more than a dozen within the month of January to come to various libraries around the state. Um, because of our limited staff um, and ability to travel, we decided to start up um, a kit program to send all of our fossils out to y'all. And it uh, turned into such a big program and so popular that we've been doing it every year since. 
Um, so this, this theme um, is our second one that we've done on a changing exhibit. Those of you that were around last year may have remembered uh, the Villas of Aplantis uh, near Pompeii. We sent a volcano and some ancient coins um, in support of our changing exhibit. Um, and as I said, this year we'll focus on music with our guitar exhibit. Um, we've learned some lessons along the way. One of them is that it's hard to, to uh, for you all to ship one kit um, you know, to another library to t do that timing and making sure that you've got enough time to plan and have have what you need in order to implement your programs. So what we started last year, um, I think it was last year, is sending you all your own individual kits that you get to keep. And that worked out really well. So we're going to do that again this year. So if you sign up to um, to get a free kit, there, there's no cost to them, uh, we'll send you a box of materials in mid-May, and you get to keep that for the duration of your summer reading program. And I think this year it'll be um, a fantastic addition to some of the other programs um, that you may have already planned on doing or that you may have um, resources to do. Uh, so this will help give you a little bit, a few more extra tools to make your summer reading programs um, a little bit stronger. Um, we'll also provide lessons and materials too, and Jamie will be going through what she's done to, to pull together activities for you. So as I mentioned, if you missed it, these are free. Um, the goal for us is to, for the museum and Montana State is to get more resources out to all of our uh, families and communities around Montana. Um, so this program supports that. All you have to do is let us know that you want one. Um, what we're gonna do today is go through the list of what's gonna be in there so you'll have an idea of what you're getting. Um, but the best way to, to go about um, reserving one is actually to go online, and I'll show you where that is in a minute. Uh, right now, Jamie's uh, handling our influx of spring field trips, so she's getting a lot of phone calls from teachers. Uh, so by putting uh, by filling out that form online or shooting us an email, um, we'll be able to hold on to your registration info till we're ready to order all of our materials probably mid-March. So we'll hop out to the website here in just a second, but there's some contact info for you. We'll come back to this at the end. Uh, but I'm going to jump on out to the website, so I'm going to leave this PowerPoint um, slide and show you how to navigate to the Museum of the Rockies website. Um, as you have questions as we're um, introducing this content, you're welcome to, to type your question on into that chat box. Um, I'll make sure to get to those um, as they're appropriate or at least by the end of the session, so we're keeping an eye on that too. So feel free to jump in um, if you've got any questions. So I'm going to zoom on out of here. We're going to go to the web browser. I'm going to start on the home page here. Um, all right, so museumoftherockies.org. I'm going to make this nice and big here, fill up that screen. Where you're going to go to is this uh, tab up here of education. Uh, so this is an educational program that we're doing. When you click on education, you'll see all the different types of audiences that we serve, and you will go right to libraries. So we've built a page just for all of you. Um, as we develop more information, we'll, um, we'll put some of that right here on the home page. But over on the right side, you'll see um, previous year's activities. And we leave them up there for a couple of years because they sometimes are uh, relevant beyond uh, just the lifespan of that program. So you'll see we've already built a 2018 tab here for you with a few links. Uh, we've got links to some outside um, uh, curriculum guides, which are fantastic. Some of that you know already, your collaborative summer library program has a whole bunch in there. And then you'll see today's webinar slides are up there. If you wanted to grab those now, you could. Um, they're, as, they're listed as a PDF there. We'll also put uh, the link to this recording up there too. So everything that you need will be um, in, these, uh, in this dropdown over here. The other thing I wanted to show you off of our website is uh, up here on exhibitions. So this, this uh, kit is based around our, uh, our exhibit that's coming this summer. So if you click on exhibitions, you can see everything we currently have and we're in between changing exhibits right now. Um, but this coming soon is, is where you'll find information on the guitars exhibit before it's up. Um, and that exhibit opens up on Memorial Day. So if you click on guitar, the instrument that rocked the world, and it'll take you to um, our exhibit page for that. You can get uh, some, you can look at some photos of what the exhibit looks like. 
um, get an idea of what that exhibit is, and then um, it looks like you have to hit it off of here. But there's the uh, artifacts as well. So this exhibit is coming with uh, a whole bunch of um, important, significant guitars that will be on display. So it's pretty exciting. So those are the two main pages that you'll want to know how to get to on our website. Um, one thing I did skip over, I'm going to go back to this libraries page. If you scroll down to the bottom, this view form button, that'll pop up the registration. So um, what we are looking for is um, where to ship the kit to. So uh, it, we tend to go UPS, so not a PO box, but give us your shipping address. We always are interested in number of um, kids and adults that are, act, uh, that are accessing the materials. And that helps us in reporting back to Montana State and to our donors and supporters of what our outreach looks like around the state. Um, we're, we're really hoping to be able to hit all 56 counties in the next couple of years. We've been taking um, a couple counties at a time, a couple counties a year, and expanding our programming. But uh, we're really hoping to be able to provide more outreach to the entire state. Down here, we I, I want to just add in here, this is Joe from the State Library. I mean, since you since we do have this great partnership with the Museum of the Rockies and they do provide these materials to you for free, I really hope you will collect some data and photos to share with um, Angie and Jamie after you've used these uh, materials so that they really have proof of performance that they can use with their funders to keep this program going. Yeah, thank you so much, Joe. Uh, since we're on that note too, if you wanna see just, uh, um, out of curiosity, how we've grown the program. Um, and of course, it's not it's popping up on there. Um, we tend to have a tab on here. There it is. Under schools and educators, there's this uh, uh, nondescript outreach button down here. This shows which communities we serve. Um, so you can see we're missing a few counties still. Um, but if you go back in time, uh, to some of our earlier years, you can see down here, we've, we've tried to fill in some of our rural rural areas of the state. So if you're sitting in one of those counties or know of a librarian um, or a library in one of those counties that we can work with that we're currently missing, we would love to be able to, to reach um, communities in those parts of the state we're not at yet. So with, uh, with all that being said, I'm going to go back to our PowerPoint slide here and get, a, get us back on track. So uh, there's the information on how to get to the kit. Um, I've mentioned it a couple times, but uh, today we're gonna be giving you kind of an overview of the activities and what we think will go into that kit. We, do, we will produce a full curriculum guide for you uh, that gives you the narrative of how you would set up and lead uh, a program. That one's not ready yet because we're waiting on a little bit of feedback from, from you all of what you think will be best. When we have that ready, what we'll do is post it up on that page in the drop downs there on the right that I showed you. And then we'll, we'll send you an email too that says, you know, it's ready. Uh, but after today, you'll have an understanding of the, the four basic activities that we'll be um, providing for you in this kit. So there's our um, summer changing exhibit on guitars, which I just, I, I don't know who picked out the theme Libraries Rock, but we are very grateful you all did. It's a nice connection for us. Uh, and then, what we um, what we want to share with you are the uh, these links to these three different um, online resources. And Joe mentioned the the collaborative summer library program. Um, that one has a fantastic um, set of uh, of resources for you. There's a couple other ones as well. The National Guitar Museum uh, provided the activities that go with the guitar exhibit that we're getting. Uh, so some of our activities come from there. Uh, PBS also uh, has some great lessons, too. Typically, in the past years, we've been the expert on whatever the content is that we're providing for you. So whether it's paleontology or astronomy, um, we've had a lot of those lessons here in our own resources at MOR. When we have changing exhibits, we lean on other partners that um, are experts in that area. So we don't typically have exhibits on music or sound. So what we've done is... Um, is pulled from a variety of resources and created a 90-minute program that when we go visit our local um, our local libraries, like, like Sarah, if we go see you over in Belgrade this summer, this would be what we would teach, how we would set up the activities. Um, you could take each one of these and expand it into its own program. 
Uh, but what we've done is pulled together an example of what we would do for our local communities and then uh, give you a whole bunch of uh, cool resources to go with it. So I highly recommend visiting these three sites or um, getting with Joe to get the, the big curriculum guide. We've linked to those as well off of our website too. So any logistical questions so far, I think at this point we'll turn it over to Jamie and have her walk through the different activities that we're doing. But I'll keep an eye on the chat box. So um, feel free to jump in as she's sharing uh, what she's pulled together for us. Uh, feel free to jump in and ask questions. So with that, I'll pass it over to Jamie. Hello, amazing Montana librarians. Um, thanks for signing on today. Um, I'm going to give you a quick overview of the activities. I've structured it um, based on the five E's, hoping that kids engage in music and then go into the science of how it actually gets to your ear and your brain. Um, I'll talk about kit materials, ones that will supply and ones that you will need to supply. Again, if you have any additions or suggestions on how we can beef that up, please feel free to let me know. Um, each activity includes a bit of background information, and as mentioned, there's a lot more out there. So. Um, all kits start with, or all of the curriculum start with a brief introduction about the Museum of the Rockies. Please let them know that we're over here, and we love to educate everyone around the state. Um, that'll take about five minutes, and we'll go into making music, so kids will... We'll talk more about that, making music. What is sound? Talking about vibration and what it takes to get that wave into your ear. What happens in your ear with the anatomy of sound. And then taking a brief look at music from around the world with mapping international music. And a few suggestions at the end about books, about sound, and music. Again, these are just a couple suggestions. There's a lot more out there that you are probably aware of. In uh, throwing this together, too, we understand that um, y'all work with different grade levels of different sizes. So even our um, our three local libraries that we go to here of Bozeman, Belgrade, and Livingston, those three environments look quite different for their summer reading programs. So we anticipate that you'll adapt this for what your age group looks like, um, how long your program runs, what your teaching space looks like. So the goal of throwing this together is that it's a, um, in, easily adaptable set of activities for you. All right, making music. So I would start by brainstorming with students um, about what their favorite instrument is. And if they have not used that instrument before, hypothesize how it makes sound. Um, chances are you'll hear things like blowing, strumming, banging, and hopefully the word vibration gets thrown around. I would certainly define vibration such that it makes sense when we move into um, the next part of the lesson. Um, and then with the straw kazoo and a few other instruments, you can extend it a little further as to how these, how you might be able to change the instrument sound. Um, the activities are straw kazoo, a can drum, and a cereal box guitar. The straw kazoo is simply taking a plastic straw, biting the end, so it squeezes together and then cutting it into a V-shape, reopening it so the air flows through and humming through that. The can drum, you might want to start collecting your recyclables now, is just as it says, a, a can with a balloon stretched over the top. Um, and then you can provide pencils or chopsticks to bang on that a little bit. The third one, the cereal box guitar. Um, I would suggest doing this one of two ways. Again, you can start collecting your recyclables now, or if you have a way to communicate with your participants ahead of time, have them bring a cereal box, a shoe box, a tissue box, um, rid them to the, to the lesson. Um, the can drum, we'll send a few things for that. We'll send a wire or string and then some masking tape because you want those cans to be super safe and not have any sharp edges. The cereal guitar box, we will send um, rubber bands and a craft knife so that you can cut the things you need to cut. Um, alternatively, you could do this, set this up a couple different ways. You could have, if you have enough time, you could have kids make all three instruments. I would probably divide them into whatever instrument appeals most to them 
and have each kid make different instruments. Or if that took up too much time, um, we're hoping to have several instruments in your kit or you could collect them from your from around town. Even kitchen pots and pans make a good band, but ultimately creating a library jam band at the end of all of this. Let them engage with those musical instruments and then move into move into the science of it. So what is sound? Here we go into the science. Sound is invisible, but it has physical properties and it moves in waves through the air. Um, we'll look at tuning forks and making waves. Tuning forks is really to take a closer look to at that vibration. We'll send several tuning forks so that you can hear different pitches. Ultimately brainstorming and hypothesizing with your students why are those pitches different. And it comes down simply to different wavelengths. Um, making waves looks at the physical wavelengths. You can do this one of two ways. With littler kids, I would suggest doing it with a jump rope or a rope. And then with bigger kids, if you really wanted to get into the physics of all of it, um, you can look at how a slinky, the space between the different coils of the slinky, and go in depth in that way. Um, so the waves are essentially pressure as it hits your ear that goes into your ear. And so the classic cup on a string or personal phone will allow them to feel that pressure as it hits their ear. Um, I would front load, heavily front load students on this one with safety precautions. We don't want to damage anyone's ear by yelling too loud into that or, or yeah, just be safe. <laughs> <laughs> Lastly, we're going to look at the anatomy of sound and the human ear. As you know, it's, con it's made up of lots of small parts that react to that pressure from the sound waves. Um, these all work together creating signals that proceed into your brain. So this one you can use um, your drum from the past activity. I would create at least one drum. Um, you can do this one of two ways. You can use a big like Folgers tin or plastic can, cover, the, or the, cover it with a balloon or saran wrap, um, and then put it on a cookie sheet. Put on top of that saran wrap rice or grass clippings or Cheerios or anything really light that's going to vibrate on that plastic. You can get creative with whatever you have available. And then you're going to have kids clap, bang, yell, sing, <laughs> whatever you can think of to make that plastic vibrate just as the eardrum does when the sound wave hits your ear. Um, you can play with that in all sorts of different ways. Essentially, the can is the eardrum and, is, and the rice is, are the small bones in your ear, the anvil and the stirrup. So showing how that vibration moves moves past those and, and onto your brain. Any questions so far? Any feedback? How's everyone doing? There's a lot coming. Uh, so just to for those folks who are new, you're going to be sending some of these materials and then more detailed instructions on how to set up and plan these kind of lessons and activities and uh, just so you know oh, there's Jeannie Ferris looks like fun and then of course links to other resources so you can kind of some of the some of these things are you might kind of want to see a video or something about how um, like a, a, that guitar I'm thinking that's got to be complicated is it complicated <laughs> to make a cereal box guitar with rubber bands and no, and we'll I have a link for that too that gives really um, descript instructions. And so thank you for bringing that up again. I forgot in addition to the cereal boxes, also start collecting paper towel rolls as the, the oh, handle of for the for the neck of the guitar. Yeah. The box is just the the box okay. of the guitar. And I'm not very good with guitar anatomy, so that might be proper. I apologize. <laughs> We'll get, we'll get really good with guitar anatomy, I'm sure, once that exhibit shows up. I don't know. Is it called the neck? I think, I don't know. I don't, I, I just made that up. So this is Joe. So I'm just, I'm looking at the uh, chat box and then seeing people say it looks like fun and they're real excited. And the drum idea to show how the ear works is kind of a cool idea. So um, c carry on. It's All right, really great. So lastly, um, part of 
Museum of the Rockies' mission is to bring the world to Montana, so we thought it would be fun to look at music from all over the world. As you know, there's amazing music from different parts of this world we live on. Um, so we'll include a world map and a CD with world music. You can play little clips of this music, give the students a sticker, and have them go stick it on the map where they think that that music came from. Um, again, another one that you can delve so far into. Tons of resources out there, um, all the way from the Smithsonian to different orchestras around the world have amazing music curricu curriculums. Lastly, just a few of the many books that exist. Um, these are aimed at, aimed at younger readers. Mole Music is about this little mole who picks up a violin. He's really not very good at the start, but becomes a master of the violin. The two in the middle, Sound and Oscar the Bat, talk more about those vibrations and waves that go through the air. And then Ada's violin um, is quite impressive in that this little girl realizes she's in a third world country third world country, realizes her resources are minimal, and creates a recycled orchestra in Paraguay. Lastly, and again, chime in if you have additional needs at this point. This is what we're hoping to send you. Instruments include the one I'm most excited about, the diddly bow. Um, you can use the diddly bow for extensions in almost all of these. Um, it is simply a cigar box or something similar to a cigar box with a dowel and one single string on it. Um, you can watch vibration on it. You can change the vibration length on it. You can make music. If you were to YouTube Diddly Bow, um, you'd see some amazing, amazing music coming out of these little simple guitars. Um, sound pipes. Sounding, um, we're working on sound pipes. We may either buy them or craft them ourselves. Yeah. They're essentially like a big, um, you can think of like a PVC pipe or a tube, and the size of that tube changes the sound that comes out of it. So there are some commercial ones that are available um, that we think we could probably produce some here too. What we're trying to get a read on, we want to send you a bunch of cool um, instruments that you could use throughout the summer. Um, and what, what we'll take a read on is how many of these kits we need to produce and, uh, and make sure that we can use our budget accordingly to pick out the best resources to send you. But it's essentially envision kind of like a xylophone, but taken apart using PVC pipes or tubes. We did, um, actually, it's, we had a webinar last fall. Um, I'll, I'll put a link to that. Web, I'll look it up and put a link to that webinar with one of our librarian, school librarians who was... Um, had seen a presentation and was planning to use those sound pipes for some activities in her library. So cool. it's it's really similar to using the tuning forks. It just changes the, that wavelength and ultimately creates a different sound. They're neat. And and just one question that came in is who is the author of the sound book? It's hard to read on there. You may have to yeah. look that one up. Yeah. Loud, like soft, high and low. I'll look it up. Looks like Natalie is her first name. Maybe the last name begins with an R. Great. Okay. Um, so yeah, other instruments besides the sound pipes and the tuning forks we just talked about. Handbells, triangles, a harmonica, and a tambourine. And as I mentioned, your good old kitchen materials are always awesome to just bang around on too if, that's, if you would like to add to what we send you. Don't forget spoons. <laughs> um, some craft materials that will be in there. Large, large, heavy-duty balloons to stretch over the top of those cans. Um, good rubber bands to hold those balloons on. And for making your cereal box guitar, we'll send you a craft knife. Also useful with the cereal box guitar. Masking tape for the drums. And colored dot stickers for your world mapping. And wire or cord for your... Um, cup phones, personal phones. Um, other materials will include some sort of ear diagram. Not sure whether that would be 3D or flat. A rubber mallet, slinkies, rope, a Montana map. So when you point out where Bozeman is and the Museum of the Rockies are, they can get a visual on that. World map, again, for your international music portion and a world music CD. 
Are we missing anything? Feel free to throw it in that chat box if you're like, oh, this would be great to have in there. We can't necessarily afford to have to go pick up this. Or it's not available in our community. Could you please include that? I appreciate those suggestions. So the outcome of today, what, we're, um, what we've got are these activities that we just ran by you. Uh, what we're looking for is that sounds great, looks like the right direction, um, feedback on what those materials are that we pick out in there. From that, then Jamie will build the really detailed curriculum. So um, as Joe was mentioning earlier, we'll provide you in the, you know, in years past, it's been upwards of 40 pages or so of lesson plans on how to set it up, how to prepare things, links to videos so you can see how it works, um, um, all of that extra stuff you need to back up those activities. Uh, yeah, so we were, Jody, um, Jody was asking if um, we were going to include books, um, and we are envisioning what, what we're guessing right now are the ones from that slide, so we can go back here. Um, uh, those are the ones that we've picked out thus far, and I love that Joe threw out the question, too, of um, if anybody else has any other books that they know of, that would be great. Um, so those are the ones we're looking at right now. Uh, Kelsey, I'm glad. Thanks for your feedback. Um, I think the... I think the activities that we've chosen could turn into entire days on their own. Mm -hmm. So if you're looking for um, weekly ideas, um, you could take each one of these, I think, and expand it. You know, even that beginning one with making music and doing a library jam band, I would envision that um, with enough materials, your your kids that, that participate could uh, spend an entire program making musical instruments. So um, we're hoping that, that what we've picked out is uh, adaptable, that it's engaging, but also gives you um, what we like to focus on here at MOR is the science behind everything. So the science behind sound in there as well. So good. I'm glad you're excited, Kelsey. And if we find some better book resources in the meantime, that that could change. So just a heads up there. Great. And Sarah, we'd love to come see you over there in Belgrade too. So if you want us to come visit, we'd be happy to happy to drop on by. So the next steps for you all um, would be to uh, hop on our website um, and let Jamie know that you'd like a kit. Um, as you're digesting all of this and thinking through uh, your summer lineup, if you've got feedback, again, we're, we'd uh, love to hear from you. Um, but our big goal is to send you a big box of cool stuff on music uh, that can last you all summer long. So um, last year with the Plantis, it was pretty specific on, on our, our lesson and our activities. And I think the exciting part about uh, this summer reading theme is the, the kit that we send you from MOR, I think could span multiple weeks beyond the lessons we've provided for you. I'll um, throw extensions into the curriculum as well. As we were saying before, there's just heaps of information on on the science of sound. Yeah. You could take it to fifth grade and beyond, should you choose. So a lot of comments coming into the chat box. I'm just going to read them, um, a few of them. So someone is was saying they're also planning to do something on rocks, actual rocks, which I assume yeah. is geology and stuff. And yeah. uh, you might probably... Have, might have some suggestions for them on that, given that you guys have a lot of yeah. uh, exhibits on geology as well. Yeah, so that's, um, we were so focused on the music that I didn't even think of rocks. <laughs> that's great. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of Not silly that MOR wouldn't think about the rock portion of that word, but um, yeah, you're welcome to borrow any of our outreach kits. So I'm gonna zoom out of here for a minute um, and go back to our website. Um, while it's not, uh, overarching geology, we're obviously strong at fossils, and we've got some great fossil kits if you wanted to focus on that. Under education, if you go to schools and educators and classroom resources, these are all the other pre-made kits that we have available. So uh, you could, uh, this paleontology one would probably be your best fit. Let's now these, are, these are borrowed, right? Yes, these are borrowed. Yep, so you'll rent these for a, a week or two and then send them back to us. So inside the, the fossils kit are a whole bunch of real dinosaur fossils, a real triceratops horn. Um, this pr process of paleontology, that was essentially, well, it's kind of a combo of the fossils and the process of paleontology that we um, 
sent out uh, for that first dig into reading. So um, you're welcome to, to look through these. And if you want to borrow a, um, a geology-based kit from us, we'd be happy to let you borrow one. Uh, which goes to Kathleen, you are asking um, if you check out the kits for a month, you actually get to keep all of this stuff. So what we learned a couple years ago is that it's difficult to coordinate sending multiple kits around the state, that that um, was, was stressful for all of us. And so last year, I think it was, we changed the program and we make 30 to 35 um, individual kits that we just send to you all and then you get to keep them forever. Yeah, so, so like the library summer reading kits, the, li the librarians re the libraries receive and they get to keep. But you have these other kits that are available to borrow. So there's we're talking about two different types of kits here. Correct. And C Kathleen says, "Wow, yeah, it is kind of cool that you guys build these into your summer program, your 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 exhibits, and so you and it's just great that that yeah, it's, it's turned out to be a really great partnership. I think." Um, for both um, all of the libraries and for MOR. And as we were talking about at the beginning, you know, we've got a we've got a, a goal of reaching every library um, or all the communities throughout the state of Montana, and we can't do it without working within those small communities. So you all are essentially are acting as a hub for us for the summer. So we're happy to support um, your programming in any capacity that we can to to get our resources out there. I'm gonna pull, let's pull back up to the contact page here just so you have it. So other questions um, that popped up? Well, one comment about um, the singing rocks uh, outside of Butte, Montana. Um, it, uh, might, <laughs> there's an interesting crossover between geology and sound. Um, is an interesting geological site people might want to uh, learn more about. Well, I guess it's near Whitehall. and. Um, <laughs> I'm looking it up on the on the internet. I want to. I couldn't remember exactly where it was, and I I would also ask. I I did put a note in there about um, if li I, sometimes our librarians know just the right books that go along with a theme. So if you if listening to this, you you know of just the right book, and I will especially challenge Joy up at Rocky Boy if you have suggestions for a good. Um, Native American culturally themed book that would go along with this and you could share that with the rest of our libraries. That is really helpful. One other question I had is this really cool dinosaur guy with a guitar. Is that your original um, <laughs> art that there? Is, no, that is in the guitars study guide. There are several coloring sheets that you can pull from that. It's linked back on our library's website. Perfect. That's there's n our librarians do love coloring sheets for their summer reading program too. So there are some really fun ones in there. And so Joyce says the she'll look into it. She, if I know Joyce, she will. If there if there's one out there, she'll find it. So. Oh, um, and one of the other questions was: Are you including books? Yep. I, yep. Did you say that? You might have gotten to that while I was. Yeah, that's okay. The those books that we listed are what we're looking at right now, but Joy, if you find um, other ones that would be fantastic to add, um, we'd love your help on that too. So this is the exhibit, the um, study guide for the guitar exhibit that's got um, uh, various pages in it that you can use. So it's posted up there too. I won't scroll through this whole thing and make you dizzy by watching me scroll, but um, this is linked right off of the Montana Libraries page here, this guitar exhibit study guide. So I think everybody should run and start looking at some of this stuff as you're planning. It, you know, what's really nice about this is that you've really covered the gamut with beyond STEM all the way to STEAM, you know, and of course even STREAM because when we add libraries like to use the term, the, acron the acronym STREAM for science, technology, reading, engineering, arts, and math. And and you've got all of it in here. You, you haven't missed a thing, so that's terrific. Great. Thanks so for that. Anybody has, have any other questions or comments we want to capture on our recording, suggestions? Looking at our chat box. Jamie, we'll call you. We'll chat offline about visiting Whitehall. And on that, I'm going to go ahead and stop our recording. And you guys are done, right? I mean, just want to make sure before I do that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs>
she got. <laughs> you said all you're meant to say. Well, and and thank you. Um, and and I will. And if you are watching the recording, check in the description uh, because I'll have uh, the links to this. What these web pages um, on the Museum of the Rockies page, so you can easily access those. So thanks, and uh, we will stay uh, for the rest of you who are here just a little longer and take some more questions. But thanks, uh, you guys, for presenting this and for doing this. This is really just terrific. Well, thanks for hosting us. We appreciate it.